Hello, beta testers. My name is Kyle, and I'd like to quickly address that EA allegedly banned someone from using their account with access to all of their games because of the use of the term STFU in an online encounter. That's the abbreviated version that doesn't have the expletive. Well, I've been telling you that subscription services are in your future because what they want, desperately, is to be able to revoke access when your disagreements become problematic with your toxic misogyny. Disagreements the equivalent of bigotry. Don't be fooled by losers jumping on the Ubisoft roast bandwagon. I ask you, do you think that the shills making dick-sucking faces in their thumbnails promoting Sushi Squad have a problem with ads in their full-priced live services that also have a battle pass? Of course not! Like this video and subscribe into one of the few remaining heterosexual gaming communities on the internet so that we can inform each other and make wiser investments. Today, I'm going to be talking about new Rocksteady's Sushi Squad, known on the streets as Marvel's Avengers 2. Games are infested by cheaters these days, but trust me when I say sliding things into the fine print to justify revoking that access that you paid for? <laughs> oh man, that's the future. You know, deciding that your harmless thing that you did is offensive? Mark my words, somebody's getting banned for misgendering somebody. It's gonna be wild. Number 15. Rocksteady has clarified that yes, an internet connection is required to play Sushi Squad, regardless of whether or not you're playing solo. But did you know that? Number 14. On their pre-order page, it is made abundantly clear that WB Games may modify or discontinue online services with a reasonable notice at any time. <laughs> wow. So if people want to waste their money like with Avengers, power to the tester. But you remember multiverses? Strain your brain. It's inaccessible now. And this time, Warner Brothers is kind enough to let you know up front that this can shut down whenever it's no longer sustainable or, you know, if they just feel like it. Number 13, both of the founders of Rocksteady and countless unnamed talent have publicly left the studio. And not because they're retiring, but because they're simply done at Rocksteady. And if Rocksteady wasn't currently staffed by incompetent and easily triggered freshmen, they would listen to big dick consultants like Kyle instead of attempting to hide my overwhelming catalog of public sentiment surrounding this project. It's almost weird. The delay implied, the backlash put the fear of God into them enough to polish and change something that would be made apparent when they came back out but you crawled out of your little cave and your game's still fucking lame <laughs> number 12 the developers are clueless the truth of the matter is rocksteady had no idea what to show you with sushi squad and after delaying for nine months they still don't in an honestly baffling move they've opted to commit time and effort to producing a multiple part series exploring what's on offer fair enough 20 minutes <laughs> 20 minute episodes, but they refuse to showcase gameplay until 12 minutes in? Pathetically empty streets that they have hilariously tried to defend. The very issue people had with Gotham Knights. The squad are rarely shown fighting more than three or four enemies at a time, recycling the one melee move with the same animation over and over. At one point, a group appeared to spawn in before an abrupt cut. <laughs> Seeing is believing. So, as I kept repeating, delaying the game past Spider-Man and allowing Fortnite to continue its metamorphosis would be a mistake. But I'm a visual guy, so I imagine other people are too. Observe this encounter in Spider-Man 2 that seems borderline tailor-made for wave-based co-op encounters that might appear when Insomniac makes and releases its multiplayer Marvel garbage. If it is that, you can see more than four people to fight. It's weird, right? More importantly, if Insomniac allowed for four superheroes to play simultaneously if they could resist putting Mary Jane in there, we can assume that they would double the enemies. The year will be 2024 when Sushi Squad drops, and I find the density of low-level enemies, <sighs> or the lack thereof, troubling. 
I believe it to be as telling as enemies simply standing around in Gotham Knights. And maybe people aren't keen <laughs> enough to, to perceive that when looking at stuff. But that's okay. I'll be here to let them know. You know, to put a big red circle on a fucking thumbnail and talk about all the things that people missed apparently while some other person makes a dick-sucking face with... with so oh, it's, the, it's the best game ever! Buy those creators, man. <laughs> Good for them. Among the developers, there should have been a single gamer that was less focused on pride flag signaling to trick people into their panderverse and more on selling a kick-ass shooter for an explosive, high-flying, chaotic experience. If traversal is all these devs think will sell their game, the Asians got news for you. Their free games will offer the same. Fortnite is ever evolving with racing modes and rock band modes and all this nonsense coming down the pipe still waiting for their FPS. Spider-Man 2 didn't even have to innovate in the five years it took them for a woke sequel and it'll still be better than Sushi Squad. Number 11, Kevin Conroy Clarity. You know, I give the devs shit. But a great indication that fans are no longer at Rocksteady is that they're so stupid that they haven't done the intelligent thing, which is to articulate that Conroy's performance will always be available at the top of every stupid show or announcement that you make since you are fully aware that the always online in the midst of Warner potentially just shutting it down is going to be an issue for most people. If you have time to produce these 20 minute episodes on your live service that you're deceptively hiding aspects of, then you have time to do this. Your 20 minute videos lacked the uncut gameplay that it needed. You had months. You disappointed again. I'm the messenger, and if I didn't know what I was talking about, that I wouldn't be reminding you again. Clarify. Beta testers, I'm sorry, I know it seems like I'm helping Sushi Squad in this scenario, I don't expect them to listen to me. I expect my haters, who compulsively watch me to admit, as usual, that I have a point, and end up parroting the message in their little echo chambers. Number 10. The writing will be terrible. <laughs> Unless you like Saints Row, in which case it's gonna blow your mind and hold on to your balls. If you made a Batman game and it was gritty, it only logically follows that a game, from the villain's perspective, should be more gritty. Right? Comment or correct me below, but at a glance, Flat Booty Harley Quinn telegraphs how safe this game's playing it. Even visually, when you expect to sell microtransactions, you are entirely inferior, a downgrade from the based male studio that I guess was making something that was actually going to appeal. And next to stiff competition, jiggly competition really, uh, jiggly competition that'll make the audience members stiff, the writing handled in collaboration with Sweet Baby, that's out here serial flag in niggas videos, it'll focus on injecting as much of their massage as possible. As Insomniac's creative director says, after acknowledging fan hatred of their uh, ugly as fuck Mary Jane portions. Give people stuff you know they want, so you can inject things yeah. that maybe they aren't familiar with or maybe they don't know they want, but make them like that stuff. Inject stuff they don't know they want. You gotta force behaviors. You know what I mean? You mo go go five G's out. Number nine, developers deaf to feedback. Nothing telegraphs the trajectory of an ongoing live service better than developers who are so stupid that they're fucking blocking people who are offering the most constructive criticism effortlessly. Uh, that is who I am. If Rocksteady actually listened, they'd have started their 20 minute video with Captain Boomerang throwing his boomerang for a flashy anime attack that cut through the enemies like butter, could even be upgraded to have the speedster crap going on or some bullshit that's identical to Shing Chu's ability in Genshin if y'all fuck with that. You all, you all want to be Fortnite, but even Fortnite listens. Recently, they tried to adjust cosmetics by disabling skins with guns and, and scary teeth as not allowed in its E for everyone modes. Fortnite's bracing for the inclusion of an upcoming metamorphosis, their real first step into the metaverse here. But 
The stupidity that the shills deep throat has them refusing to accept that people don't hate Sushi Squad exclusively because it's a live service. They also don't hate it because it's not like Arkham. They hate it because the shooter aspect is at odds, which is to say it clashes with the super villain and superhero game. The tragedy there is that even Marvel's Avengers understood not to attempt to make a shooter out of the Avengers. Even if their Avengers game ended up with the worst heroes like Miss Marvel, Kate Bishop, Lady Thor, and it's a copy and paste. But the best their showcase could do was tap the melee button over and over, showing off the same animation. Here's a couple takedowns. Maybe that's tricking someone stupid into believing that this is melee, you know what I mean? Your game is in a The Marvels situation where it needs to show off Captain America and Iron Man and Thanos to pathetically attempt to tether itself to something people actually like. But Rocksteady, that was eight years ago from a way different studio. I'm not sure why you're inviting comparisons and including so much Arkham clips in your live service looter shooter you've delayed nine months to piss away time crafting masturbatory 20 minute episodes because your game is so great that everything you show makes everyone less enthusiastic about it. It'd be crazy if there were bugs, right? And you guys were producing this horse shit. I hope this level of narcissism isn't reflected in the game. But who am I kidding? When whack Wacky, zany, and goofy are the one beat that these hack writers think comic book media should reflect. It's really all about the message. <laughs> Number eight, man. The combat. This demo is pathetic. And Rocksteady should be ashamed. Near the 13 minute marker and the 20 minute episode of boring TV that Rocksteady's producing, they finally showed what gamers would want to see. Gameplay, of course. If you were cutting a video or tweeting a moment in this trailer, it would most definitely have been this, because it's something to see. You'd think they'd lead off with that in case people, you know, click off the video, but maybe they don't even have the intelligence to understand that you have to really captivate and, and grab people's attention if you want to hold them. Maybe you don't play COD, but Warzone manages 100 players on a map with vehicles and Fortnite does too, a lot of other games kind of have things going on. So walking around this empty ass city is really weird. I feature Fortnite B-roll regularly because I know not everybody gets down on that, but Fortnite evolves and so has the industry. Don't get me wrong, Spider-Man 2's wingsuit is so cool, SSD go brrr, right? But Just Cause did come out in 2006. And something tells me if the wingsuit goes this fast in Spider-Man 2, you're going to be going kind of like, you know, Gotham Knights speed in Sushi Squad. So I'm going to give you a slow-mo play-by-play -play of the combat that was shown. And maybe me narrating will illuminate something for you. So teleport dash onto the rooftop, dodge roll, jump. A little bit of shooting, dodge roll, a little bit of shooting, teleport dash, jump teleport dash jump uh you know throw the boomerang and then shooting him before he hits the ground not bad throw the boomerang he leaps up shoot him in the air not bad i guess the, the probably that's probably the main thing you're going to be doing teleport dash uh, oh a force jump on that ass a, a dodge roll a teleport dash jump beta tester this was their opportunity to fire on all cylinders and really sell their product to people who may have been giving it a chance following the justified backlash but not only are they obviously trying to hide how monotonous this combat is by jumping and dodging and dashing and all this shit right they're also slyly trying to navigate around the fact that you're only fighting a handful of people on these rooftops at any given time a significant amount less people than you saw in the arkham games by a different studio years ago number seven there are over five in-game currencies why so many boy it's to slow you down okay it'll inevitably be pay to skip or maybe the game goes free to play just to shake them shekels out your yarmulke number six sushi squad is planning what they're calling an alpha two months from the apparent release of their game those selected must sign a non-disclosure agreement 
and will not be allowed to discuss the specific portion that they are, you know, al allowed to play. Beta tester, please, in the comments below, tell me what an alpha two months before the game's supposed to come out does after all these delays. Number five, live service stagnation. The game should have come out in 2017, the latest. Do you know when Destiny 1 launched? 2014. Sushi Squad's uncooked ass will become available to poison you 10 years after Destiny's launch. And when Bungie isn't getting the bitch slapped out of their mouth for pandering with a woke ass, they're regular releasing paid expansions to their lackluster sequel that pissed off even the most die-hard sunk cost shill-ups. But now, they've moved on to the next grift in gaming, following the Tarkov trend to make extraction shooters, like that one Sega game, Hyenas, that got cancelled before it even came out, or the finals, the another game that nobody's playing. If I can be frank, looking at the list of games that they included in their survey, asking people, you know, before they participate in their NDA alpha two months out from their game, it's clear... I, you know, you guys have got it all. And again, what did I say with Marvel's Avengers? I said, literacy to the writing on the wall does not invalidate the fact that the writing is on the wall. Number four, history. By the time Sushi drops, it'll have been eight years since Arkham. Fifteen years since Arkham Asylum came out. And on the surface, at a glance, we can witness your downgrades. How sad for the shows that they keep flashing up all that Arkham stuff the way that the Marvels needed to use the Thanos and Iron Man stuff to remind people, please come see our movie, we know you didn't watch Miss Marvel, but please. Bungie had a 20 year history in shooters before Destiny, but even they made an open beta available, a public one. No NDA, but honestly, I get it. That's a thing that people do when they're confident about what they're making. Number three, I covered this lightly previously, but Warner Brothers has every intention of milking their IPs, so imagine what multiverses might look like if it comes out again. Hogwarts will end the year as the best-selling game because its fans were serviced. As opposed to the repulsive live service looter shooter with tame comic book characters forced into using primarily their guns. Ice that cake with candy ass writing and you've got a recipe for disaster on your hands. Number two, ugly Harley Quinn. Microtransactions, but you make women ugly frumpy? Less appealing and therefore less lucrative than what technology could mix up a decade ago? For this point alone, you deserve to fail. We cheer for you learning a lesson. We know, see, and love beautiful women on a daily basis. And this laughable, deliberate failure in the way of a downgrade when you're hiring pretty women and can easily download literally default avatars by effortlessly more talented designers than you guys. Congratulations to the ass suckers at Rocksteady who have routinely demonstrated that AI can do better. You niggas advertising AI out here? Damn, imagine sucking that much balls. Comics were amazing. Crafted to stand the test of time and people who don't respect it and vandalize it like Brian Intihar? Ooh, <laughs> you don't deserve this work. I don't want them not to work. I want people more deserving, skilled, and aware of what works and profits. They deserve the job better than the people who are just using it as a vehicle for your woke cancer. You were supposed to be keeping Conroy's memory alive, Rocksteady. Not the cancer. Not the cancer. If you had a teaspoon of sense, you'd recognize how dim-witted and cringe-potent the production of this endless series with no information is. Because this tragedy doesn't require time to become comedy. When y'all speak, I hear the exact same drivel that was flowing out of the Saints Row developers' fart-huffing mouths. The game might have stood a chance in more based hands, but it isn't, so it doesn't. Fellatio enthusiasts dropping jaw on YouTube and Twitch is not going to trick enough people into anything but reminding you of why you delayed this trash in the first place. Number one, 
Sushi Squad is the mask that this game wears. Fortnite is how it wishes to be seen, but who this game really is, is Marvel's Avengers. A DC skin in Fortnite could make triple the amount <laughs> in moments than Sushi Squad will make in its run. How amusing it is that the floaty combat and traversal actually falls far below what Fortnite has demonstrated and will, again, be evolving to show people. Maybe Robocop missed you and it feels like a bunch of people are capping over it because it truly is double A A F. A $40 game at most, which I ironically think Sushi Squad should also be charging, if not less, uh, free, you know, with all the ads and the Battle Pass garbage they're going to put in it. Robocop does Robocop justice, in my opinion, the same way that Hogwarts Legacy did, uh, pun intended. It's not a new story where the world is just a backdrop because the writers are like desperately self-inserting and pushing politics. Please imagine some shit that you like, you know, Berserk, the, the Matrix, whatever corny stuff that you're into and you're a nerd for and you'd gladly pay money to be entertained and just take, take your mind off of things. If you made it this far, thank you for listening, and I appreciate any of you commenting, subscribing, liking to push the video up. Please join the Discord to keep me aware of what's going on, and as we roll into December, feel free to go into my wish list and just judge your balls off if you're not gonna buy the whole thing for me. I'll see you later, man.